turns out I had the blue version of the dress on and today I've got the yellow version on. Uh, I'm going to show you how to make your very own version of the dress. Uh, I've got some really nice fabric. What you need is you need 55 inches of a really pretty cotton fabric or floral, something like that. You need um, 31 and a half inches of a plane. That's if you're going to use it for the bias binding and for the frill. If not, you don't need so much. You can um, take it down to 20 inches uh, and you need to buy some pre-folded bias tape. So I've got 68 inches of the pre-folded bias tape. I need four buttons for, um, for the front of the dress. You also need some thread. So I have a matching thread and then some contrasting threads to use. And you need some elastic, which I'm going to put on the frill at the bottom. Finally, I need a zipper for the back. Find my zipper. So you need a short zipper, just nine inches. I'm going to make the pattern available on the website and you just need to check what size you need. So you need to take your bust measurement and measure it against the pattern. The next stage I'm going to cut out the pattern. It's quite a simple pattern. It's only got four pieces. And in the nice floral fabric, I'm going to cut out the front and the back. I've already washed my fabric, so uh, when the dress is made up, it won't shrink. And I'm just going to lay, lay it out with the uh, fold at the front. Uh, the front piece needs to um, be cut on the fold, so I'm going to place that along here. And I'm just going to pop a few pins in to hold it in place. Once it's all pinned out, the next stage is going to be to um, mark out the seam allowance, as this pattern doesn't have a seam allowance on it. We need a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, and I'm just going to mark around the edge with some tailor's chalk. I don't need to mark the seam allowance on the armholes because that's going to have the bias binding tape around it, but I do need to mark it where the uh, yoke's going to go. Okay, and the next stage is to uh, mark out the back piece, and that's going to go. That should fit up here at the top. So I need two, um, I need to cut out two of these and they don't need to be on the fold. So I'm just going to pin that out. So I'm going to cut the front out first. <clears throat> I don't need a seam allowance at the armholes, so I can just go straight across. But I do round the yoke. So I've finished cutting out my floral pieces, the back and the front, and I've also cut out the plain fabric, which is for my yoke. I didn't have to put any seam allowance again on the armhole or the neckline. I'm going to mark out the centre fold on the front yoke, and I've just done that with some chalk so I can see what I'm doing later. On the front of the dress and the back of the dress, it's quite hard to see the chalk marks, so I'm just going to put a little, um, little cut line so I can see where I need to create my pleats later on. Now we're ready to overcast the side seams and the back seams of the dress with a, a zigzag stitch and I'm going to show you how to set up your machine. So first of all we need to find our accessories and they are 
hidden inside the extension tray. So I'm just going to get those out. And for this, I'm going to use the overcasting foot, G. Or you could use your normal foot if you wanted to. And I need to wind a bobbin. <clears throat> I'm just going to change the foot. So you just press the lever at the back and then lower it down and it snaps on and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wind my bobbin so I need to take my matching thread and place that on the machine and to hold the thread in place I need a cotton reel holder and you think you've got a couple of sizes that come with the machine place that on to hold your cotton reel in place and then take my thread and it goes through the hook at the back completely round the tension gauge and then I just need to pop the thread through one of the two holes in the top of the bobbin and place that on and flip the bobbin holder over I can then turn my machine on and if I hold it tight and put my foot on the foot pedal, it should start to wind. Once you've wound a little bit on, you can just cut this tail off and then you can wind a bobbin. Okay. Once I've wound my bobbin, I can then place it inside my bobbin case. <coughs> So here's my bobbin case and I'm just going to pop it in. The thread needs to turn clockwise inside the bobbin case. So I just pull it through and then I can open the door and that will hold the bobbin in place while I push it in. And make sure you give it a firm push just to make sure it's inside the bobbin case. And then I can trim. Now I'm going to thread up my top thread. So we need to make sure my presser foot's up and then I'm going to go follow the arrows round, down, up and round through my thread needle bar at the top and then I can lower my foot and I need to make sure that my uh, the needle's in its highest position and I can use my needle threader so I just go under and round So now I'm going to turn my hand wheel to bring my bottom thread up. I'm just going to use my scissors to catch the thread and pull it to the back. And now we're ready to start sewing. So I finished threading up the machine and now I'm going to select my zigzag, which I'm going to use for overcasting the edges of the dress. So to set that up, I need to select a zigzag. I need to turn my stitch selection dial back one to stitch three. I need to change my length to 1.5 and I need to change the stitch width to three and a half. Because I'm using a medium weight fabric, I can keep my tension on four. The machine also has a range of decorative stitches, but I'm going to use those later when I do the detail on the yoke. So now we're ready to start sewing. Okay, so now I've finished overcasting the edges of the front and the back of the dress and the next thing we're going to look at is doing the buttonholes. Mm -hmm. 